So now we've talked about how we add our displacement map so we can get realistic uh, real-time shadows, but you can, you know, you don't have to do that. You can uh, comp uh, shadows in uh, separately. And we already kind of have that. If you go over here to your alpha shadows displacement over here, you do have something called fixed shadows. And that's basically when you're in ZBrush and you do a BPR render and you go over here to your render passes and you go over here to your shadow pass. That's essentially what it's doing is it's taking that shadow pass and just multiplying it. You can see the layer is set to multiply here and all the channels are turned off except for color. So it's basically taking that shadow and multiplying it over. So uh, if you want to use that to your advantage or if you just want to not use displacement, so if you turn our displacement layer off, you can see we're just looking at a flat plane here. And let's not let's not just turn that off but also let's go in here it looks like we have a displacement uh channel so we're just going to go into the shader here and we're going to enable or disable uh displacement and tessellation here there we go so now we just got a flat uh, object so uh, if we hold down shift you can see our light still works it still kind of you know plays across our object the only thing that doesn't really happen is those cast shadows don't really uh, work that well however you can comp shadows in from zbrush so let's go back to zbrush Let's choose a basic material. Uh, and if you're brand new to ZBrush and you don't know this, um, you know, if you have your matcap materials and your standard materials, your standard materials will be affected by uh, light and real time, um, and your matcap materials won't. However, you can still cast shadows across both. I'm just choosing a basic material so you can see as the light's moving around uh, a little bit more interactively. So I'm gonna go over here to our light menu, drag it over here to the left, and we're just gonna move this light direction around. So you can see if we go over here to the um, upper left and then we hit BPR that BPR shadow is going to cast this way the cool thing about comping in our shadows is that number one if you have any areas where uh, we talked about this a long time ago but when you do your displacement map that geometry well, I guess I should demonstrate this uh, just in case you missed that video let's go back in here to our displacement shader enable and then go back here to our layers and turn our displacement back on so now here is our displacement. And you're gonna see if I move this, I get those cast shadows, but you're gonna see right here where our, our little antenna is, it's casting a big blocky shadow. That's because if I go to the side here, that displacement's going straight back. It's not you know sticking out and allowing light to go through. It's going straight back, which makes it look like you know this antenna is casting a really bizarre shadow. However, if we turn off this, our displacement layer and then go back to our shader and disenable our displacement here, we don't have a cast shadow anymore because we just have a flat plane. We just have a normal map that makes it kind of look like the light's playing across the surface, uh, but no cast shadow. However, if we go into ZBrush, this is real geometry. So before I move this uh, camera around, I want to make sure we, as again, this, we went over this in a very early video, uh, go in here either to document, zap link properties, and just store a custom, just store a view in here, and or go in here to draw. Um, well, we had to have perspective turned off, so that's probably your best bet, is document, zap link. You can even go in here and save a view out if you want to uh, get back to it later. But now if I move my camera, you're gonna say, okay, I can do this, and then I can go back to document and just go back to custom one. Very important if you're gonna be comping more images out of ZBrush to say Photoshop, or in this case, to Substance Painter. So uh, I go through here and you say, okay, yeah, this is an antenna, and the shadow should be casting an antenna across here, not a flat blocky plane. So again, let's go back here to document, go back to custom one, do a BPR render, uh, and you can change the render settings as well. If I go in here to the render menu, you can go down here to like BPR shadow. Uh, you can even render out an AO, but we already have an AO pass rendered out. Let's go in here to angle. And the more I crank this up, the softer it's gonna be, the further away from where the shadow originates. So if I BPR render this now, you see it kind of uh, gets a little softer as it gets further away. Uh, maybe not that much. Let's turn that down to like maybe five degrees. There we go. Uh, and if you see any sort of banding, you can also go through here and crank up your rays so it'll give you a little bit more of an accurate shadow. It's gonna take a little longer to render, but you know, for a nice shadow, spending an extra few seconds to comp out isn't that big a deal. Uh, so now we have a new shadow pass. So let's go ahead and click this. And you know what? Uh, you know, I just have this locally, so recording, compositing. I'm gonna make a new layer here. We'll call this, call it painter light and shadow. And we're just gonna call this new shadow. I prefer to use PSDs for all of this. So I'm going to just hit save. So now we have a new shadow in here. If you roll over this, that's what it's going to look like. If I go into Substance Painter, I'm going to navigate to that folder on Windows, uh, Recording, Compositing, uh, Painter, Light, and Shadow. I have my new shadow PSD in there. I'm just going to 
literally just drag that right here into my shelf. I'm gonna call it a texture. I'm gonna import it into the current project, say import. And now uh, it'll be here in your textures. And if you go to your project, you're gonna see uh, it's also here underneath new shadow. So now uh, if we have fixed shadows selected, we can go ahead and keep this fill layer. We don't have to change it. If you wanna make a new fill layer, you can. All you gotta do is hit fill layer. Or if you wanna to add to this fixed shadow or comp multiple shadows together, uh, we'll call this new shadow. I'm gonna turn off every channel except for color. This color over here, I'm gonna replace with new shadow. Uh, and you're gonna see that took away all my color information. Well, I'm just gonna multiply this. So we have base color as our channel selection and then switch this to multiply and boom, there we go. Now we have a shadow over here. So I can even change, I can change the lighting so we can make it make more sense by putting a light on this side and our new shadow is over here. And in fact, if you even want even more control, here's something you can do that's interesting. Instead of putting it right here in the base color, let's go ahead and click that off. Let's choose a shadow color. So for this demonstration purposes, I'm gonna choose a red color. I'm gonna right click this, I'm gonna say add a black mask. And in this mask here, I'm gonna say add a fill. And in this fill, this grayscale fill, we're gonna drop in our shadow. And right now it's the invert of what I want. So if I alt tap this mask, you're gonna see it's putting red everywhere except where it's black. Well, I want the invert of that. So I'm gonna right click this fill. We're gonna say add a levels and we're just gonna check invert here. So now if I hit M on my keyboard, everywhere where it's shadow, it's going to have a red shadow. So of course, now I have the ability to go through here, change the shadow color on the fly. So I can make it maybe very dark blue if I want. And in fact, I can go through here, let's alt tap that mask again so we can see it. I can go through here and I can add even more filters. So I can say add a filter if I wanna blur that shadow a little bit. I can just add a blur to here and then crank up that blur intensity. And then hit M to go back here. So as I crank up that blur intensity, you're gonna see it's gonna blur in and out that shadow. As well as I can go through here on this layer itself and just drop that opacity. So I can dial in the opacity of that shadow. Now in Substance Painter, uh, you don't have the ability like we did in Marmoset to add lights and move them around and stuff like that, but you can bring in light passes in the exact same way. Um, oh, one thing I do wanna mention though, if you didn't wanna do all that and you just wanted to add it to a fill layer or you can just update this fixed shadows, just click fix shadow, the base color is already there, drop new shadow right in there and there you go. But this one will give you a little bit more control. So now let's hop back over into ZBrush and let's do some lighting passes. Uh, really easy way to do that. And we'll just go ahead and keep their basic material. If you have poly paint on your object, hold down shift and turn your paintbrushes off. And then let's go ahead and grab them. So here's our material properties. Let's drag this over to the side, go in here under modifiers. Let's take that diffuse down to zero. Let's crank that specular up and then take that specular curve and tighten it up a little bit. We can also go into our light properties. Let's take that intensity and say like maybe 1.25. And if you really want to get just the light and dark information, let's take this color and just drop that down to black. So now if I move my light around, let's go ahead and uh, dock our light over here. Uh, I can move my light around. So now I can just render out light passes. However, I kind of want to do like a rim light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap on my object or on the, on the light and that's going to send it around to the back. So I can go through here and I can do maybe a light from the left. And again, you can kind of play around with like the light intensity and then also the specular intensity. It's really just kind of a more of a specular pass. We're going to call this a kind of a rim light pass. We'll call this like rim light left. And again, if you want to go, you know, take this curve and make it sharper or make it more broad, depending on the kind of look you're going for, I want to make it a little more shiny here. And one important thing is if I just take this and export it, um, it's gonna be a little bit unrealistic because it's not really having any shadow cast information. So one thing we wanna make sure we do is we go under here under our render menu, render properties, make sure shadows is turned on and also let's add a little bit of occlusion. So under our shadow properties, these settings are fine. Under AO, let's drop that blur way down to like blur of one and then crank up our rays and our resolution just a bit. So now when I hit BPR render, anywhere where light shouldn't be, it won't end up. So now we can see uh, we're getting some cast shadows going and our AO. And also remember, this is a real 3D model. So it's gonna be way more accurate than like, oh, we baked it to a plane and we're trying to cast shadows. It is actually casting shadows from a 3D model. So it should be fairly accurate lighting. Let's do one more thing. Let's go back to the specular here and let's crank this up. 
I want it to be really obvious. So I'm going to hit BPR. There we go. So we have this one light pass. Let's go back down to our render menu. We can just take this composite here. We're just going to... We don't, we're not going to take the shadow. We don't need the shadow information. We need the light information. So we're going to take this composite, click on it. We're in our recording, compositing, painter, light, and shadow. We'll call this rim light left. Oh, I accidentally select, select a JPEG. You can go through here and crop this and do quality and stuff. I'm going to cancel out of that. Let's do that again. And I'm going to select PSD. Again, change rim light left. And while we're in here, let's do another one. Let's take this light. Let's go around to the top here. Hit BPR, make it so we can capture a little bit more of those that head detail. And then we're going to go over here, uh, back down to render, click composite, say rim light top. Now we can go back in here to Substance Designer. Of course, you can composite those layers in Photoshop, no problem. I just want to show you how you can also do it in Substance Designer. So we have our, uh, we're in our alpha shadows displacement. You know what? We'll call this light as well. So one more time. You can set it up just like we did previously. You can do make a new fill layer. We'll call this rim light left. We can drag from windows our rim light left and top at the same time. We can select both of these, change it from undefined to texture. Say we want it in our current project, say import. Uh, go back to our project shell so we can see rim light left and rim light top. Drag rim light left right into that base color, turn off everything but color. And this time, we're going to switch this to screen. And now when I toggle this on and off, you'll see that. Of course, if we want more control, let's do like what we did with the shadow. And we'll go ahead and exit out of this base color. So the base color will control the color of the baked in light we're going to add. So we're going to change this to maybe a little bit more of a warmer color. Right click this, add a black mask. Right click, add a fill. In here, we're going to add rim light left as our fill and we alt tap this one. Now it's set up correctly in that where it's white, I want my light to show up. Perfect, I don't even have to add a levels to invert it. However, I can add a levels to change the impact. So now I can go through here and I can lighten up those lights and maybe make it more contrasty by darkening those darks. So if I hit M, you're gonna see the effect this is gonna have. So here's our light coming up and then here's the contrast coming in. You can see our Histogram right there. It's a pretty simple histogram, but you can still make it more contrasty here. And if you want to keep these uh, same parameters, but add that rim light top, just hit Control D on this layer, and we'll call this uh, instead of rim light left copy, we'll call this rim light top. Go with this fill layer. We don't want rim light left anymore. We want rim light top to swap that out. Same properties. Now we have a rim light top baked into our uh, comp here. Of course, we got such warm lights, we can always, of course, go to our display settings, change it from panorama to maybe something a little warmer here. And if you want to see that, let's take our environment opacity up and our environment blurred down. See, this is the environment that we're in. There we go. So we got a little bit of a warmer light and you can change the overall exposure and brightness here. But that's a result. And on this one, uh, let's go back here to display properties and again, environment opacity down. Let's try going into iRay this time. And because we're not using any like subsurface scattering or anything, uh, actually let's hop out of iRay, let's switch our material. Yeah, instead of doing alpha test, let's just go to alpha blending because we don't need subsurface scattering or anything. There we go. And this one works much better with um, iRay. So here you can use ray traced rendering in Substance Painter with our baked lighting, with our emissive and with our post effects. We have activated post effects here. So we can turn that glare on and off and you know let's crank that up a little bit there we go and we can go back let's zoom out just a little bit here we can go to a clear color for our dome there we go and now that i've darkened that we need to probably go back in here and dump that luminance just a bit there we go so again bake lighting ray trace rendering and in this one, we're not even using a displacement map. If I go to the side here, you're gonna see this is just a flat plane. There's nothing going on here. However, it looks like a 3D object and I didn't have to worry about UVs. I didn't have to worry about baking things out, polygon count, any of that stuff. We're literally just doing composition, comping stuff, look dev, in Substance Painter, and getting uh, ray trace render out of it.